Welcome to the Thursday, March 24th, 2016, regular meeting of the Hackney School Committee. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're going to start tonight with recognitions. Then we have public comment. Moving to the reports to the school committee, followed by new business. We have school committee policy, administering medication to students, school committee policy, distribution of materials on district grounds, school committee policy, dissemination of information brochures, school committee policy, advertising in the schools. Then we have a high school stateside overnight travel recommendation, a high school club stipend change, Capital Project Article Warrant, followed by, I don't think we're going to have any old business at this meeting, then it'll be followed by a second opportunity for public comment and our items by consensus. And if it's okay with the committee, but there's no one here for public comment, um, but given that we have folks from our nursing team here, can we take new business item A up first before reports? Okay, great. Come on up. Thank you. So you'll, oh, there isn't a mic, so please feel free to sit right here right beside me. Um, for the background for the school committee, I thought that if they could just provide the reason why we're taking up this policy, that might help you. Um, and then we can take out the policy and they're here to answer any questions as our experts. So do you want, Kelly, give the background about sure. why, you, why you came uh, to me? So currently we have the administration uh, medication to students. We have the Hopkinton policy. Um, it really mirrors the DPH policy. And within the policy um, is uh, for self-administration for students to administer their own medicines. It's always been EpiPens, diabetics, and um, asthma, um, as long as we get the doctor's note, the parent signs off. But um, I went to Dr. McLeod because as you know, the middle school, we go to Washington, D.C. Um, this is my 11th trip. Uh, very comfortable with the buses, but this year we're flying. Um, and with 244 students, I don't physically see how I can transport all that medication myself. Um, so we're looking to um, add a document, add a form um, that is already within the policy. Um, for students to be able to administer their own medications, transport, transport their medications to D.C., um, and then in certain instances administer their own medications with supervision. Um, what that will entail is um, there is a new form. Um, I based it off of the DPH guidelines and the Hopkinton policy. Um, both say that a student can administer their own medications if all of these criteria are met. And basically what it means is that I will still get a, a doctor's order, I still will get parental signing off on the medication, but then I'm going to sit down with each student um, and the parent if they wish. Um, the parent needs to sign the first part of the form um, authorizing self-administration of their child's medicine. And then the student and I are going to sit down and go over the back part. Um, what is your medication? Why do you take it? How do you take it? Do you know what happens if you don't take it? Um, and they have to be able to answer these questions, and I need to feel confident that they can self-administer the medication um, and that they can store it safely. Um, there is a provision that if at any time during the trip we feel that they are not being safe with their medicine, we we'll just would revoke the privilege. Um, all of that being said, um, I do feel there are some instances where four children in a room is, I wouldn't feel totally comfortable with there being psychotropics in the room. Um, I still would want the students to transport them there. Um, and the way the trip works is that we sort of have a move-in and an orientation. That is when I would take possession of those medications. Um, but I have many kids who have chronic illnesses, they've lived with them their whole lives, and they do their own medicine every day. Um, seizure medication, 
cardiac medication, a lot of GI issues, um, melatonin, uh, a lot of them still have bedwetting issues. They do all of this when they go to sleepover. So as long as it's, we have the parents' permission, they can go over it with me that they know how to take that medicine, then I'm gonna feel comfortable with them administering their own medicine. One of the things, um, we do a lot of texting in DC. Kids are very wired. Um, one of the things that I would do with them is every morning, even if they're taking their own medication, I'm gonna text them. So Mrs. Burke, did you take your medicine? And they need to confirm that they took it. Um, la great. Yeah, last year, I just went through my old forms. I transported, or I had to give 81 medications um, for the four days that we were there. But of all of that medication, only 16 of them were um, psychotropic meds. The rest of them were allergy, antibiotics, asthmas, vitamins, vitamins fish yeah. oil, calcium, um, headache medicine that if they start to feel like they're having a headache, they need to take it right away, I could be anywhere. So in those instances, I really feel like it's important for the student to be able to um, administer their own medication. So if you don't mind staying here, oh, sure, um, absolutely. we'll take up the policy because uh, I know that there's some questions. Yep. Um, and then you'll be here to answer them. All right. Great. Thank you for our consideration of the request and recommendation of the superintendent to approve policy JLCD as amended to meet procedures established by the Department of Public Health. Um, are there any comments or questions with respect to the motion that's before us? Um, or some of the information we just heard. As a point of clarification, um, one the, of the changes that is, is present is basically removing the old JLCD R3 because it was, it was out of date, mm -hmm. um, and then replacing it with a new one. The old one referenced something that we're not doing any longer. Um, The new one is in your packet. What was the old JLDC R3? I believe it was the, um, the green. It says administration of epinephrine otter injector. That's what it was. Right. And we're not, that is all, that is well, that's included in the new In the new form. Forms. So it's. Um, even though the form, uh, although that probably would be something that would need to be changed is that the title of the new form is self-administration for overnight and out-of-state field trips. So. If it's going to absolutely replace that, then mm -hmm. I mean, but it does the same thing. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. We would just need to change the title of the form. Okay. So we have authorization for dispensing school. medication, authorization for self-administration, and the new form is specifically for students on overnight and out-of-state yeah. trips. Is the administration of epinephrine auto injection? included in all of these other three forms? I don't believe not in the first not self the, the self-administration no. one it is. Right. Okay, That's, I um, must have misunderstood what you said to me then. And I'll just Okay, so we're are we adding a form? Yes. Okay. But we're not removing the forms that we already have. This is the one that we currently have for during in school. So we'll be keeping that. That's form. that's R two though. Okay. Right? Here, let me show oh. you this. Two. Yeah. What's this one? Yeah, we couldn't find that one. Right. Right. So we're not yeah. Using so we're not using that so one. That I'm. She. Dr. McLeod is right. Right. We're not using. We're not R3. using. It, it hasn't it's been referenced anywhere in the. We in, couldn't. No. We, we simply couldn't find it. We're not using it currently. So we're just going to rename that one. R3. We're replacing oh, yeah. it with the out of state. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So R2 governs the epinephrine. And epinephrine and inhalers. And, and, okay. For in school. Okay. All right. So, are there any comments or questions on the policy or the motion? Um, is this one of the ones that did get sent out? Yes. And did you get any responses from parents about confusion or anything like that? Did you hear from anybody? I got no emails from kids. So, I think John straightened me out on this. This R form R three that's in our packet is the new form. Right. 
and you're adding you just okay so what I see here as deleted is the old form and what I see highlighted in red is this form Correct. <laughs> sorry to be so thick okay and it looks like you took out that the parent and the licensed prescriber authorized in writing by authorizing this form you took that out of you know in that section so I know you're changing the form do you right. are, but do we not need to leave in there that they're still required to rather than taking that bullet out should we just change the title of the form that they're required to fill out you know what I mean because then you're listing the form down here but right. it looks like you're taking out the requirement it, or the reference to it I think it the reason the, uh, Jean, is that it was referencing JLCD R3 that we no longer have. No, but we do. We, now we have the new R3. But the new R3 is specifically about overnight trips. So this bullet seemed to be referencing the old R3, and therefore it no longer seemed relevant. It specifically says that the licensed prescriber authorizes in writing by completing administration of epinephrine auto-injector form. We no longer have that form, so it felt like that bullet was no longer no I get that I'm just un, I'm what I don't understand what I'm wondering is if rather than remove the bullet entirely you just change it to the title of the new form because right. you still want the parents to sign that you're still requiring that the parents sign this you're still requiring the, the doctor to sign this is well, I don't want administration of EpiPen uh, yeah and I don't uh, I, 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 which I, the I, form is no longer about EpiPen right, but right. right. so it, just change the title of the form in the body of the policy this form is specific to overnight trips. Right. Yeah. Not epinephrine. Yeah. So it right. wouldn't so go you would there. have okay. But I, I know what she's saying. So <laughs> what she's saying is that we took out the only reference to J three, the R three in in the entire policy. The reference is gone. The only place you find R three now in the entire policy is in the procedure reference below. Okay. So the question is if, why can't you leave that bullet in there since for even the overnight trips we said we were still going to require the parent and guardian and the licensed prescriber yeah. to sign off? Because but I think, if I might suggest, Jean, I think it belongs up above. Yeah, that's fine. Where it yeah. says the parent, guardian, nurse, and student must sign the authorization for self-administration form, where it references JLCDR2, we right. should add or JLs because now okay. it's not only referencing epinephrine. Right. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. Right. yeah. That's better. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, the deletion was cleaning up. That was good proof, right? But we still <laughs> we never put it in proof. <laughs> the new one, that right? Four. Right. 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 J L C D R three. Good catch. Okay. Thank you. Were there other questions? I had two. Okay. Um, not on the policy per se, but just on some of the stuff you were describing. Um, a little bit on the policy, I guess. So. Our, are vitamins considered prescriptions? Um, it's a medication, um, even over-the-counter medications um, on the overnight trips. Okay. I, um, allergy medicine, Zyrtec, Claritin. Okay, so this is this is not just prescription medication, then this is for any medication. Okay, all right, I'm just checking on that one. And then, um, the only other thing that occurred to me when you were mentioning that you weren't comfortable with the psychotropic um, in the room, which I, I understand, um, but how how to pull the, that medication back and not have it be like a privacy issue for those kids that they'll have Absolutely. different medications? And I'm going to also run into students who absolutely need to take a Claritin every day and they are just not going to remember it and those parents are going to say to me you need to to do this medication um, so I totally understand that it would be um, usually when I give the medications and when I collect medications no one knows what it is I'm giving or getting um, as far as everyone's concerned it's all allergy medicine everyone's sneezing we all need allergy medicine um, when I would go to their doors in the morning um, to give, or at night, or during the day, um, <laughs> it's just, I, I would never say what the medicine was. Um, so this day, and even at Nature's Classroom, I mean, they all line up, they all, there's so many kids that take medicine for a variety of different reasons. So um, there still would be privacy when I give the medicine, 
because um, it's going to be they yeah. will be at a different function I will be in a separate area and they'll have to come to me to take it but no one takes medicine with other students no I, I think I get that part of it the part for me that's a little odd is that you're having the child and the parent sign off on them being able to self-administer the medication um, so that they all can travel with it but then for one subset of medication which it's not really indicated anywhere you want to take that back so and it's going to need like, to be a conversation with yeah. each parent but um, it wouldn't be only those kelly if i can no, interrupt right. because you explained to me very clearly that many parents or some parents are not going to give permission for mm -hmm. self-medication so there'd also be that category of student um that wouldn't be only calling out one drug yeah it, it felt like and then it would be the kids that bet between the, the teacher and the nurse combined felt that the child just needed some reminders um, so it felt like it's not just the one category that's being uh, prevented from self-medicating. But I know what you mean. Otherwise, it would be like every kid that is having Absolutely. Kelly show up at the door is right. having psychotropics. Well, and I, I mean, I get, I also get the fact that, like, you're, you're not going to be on the same plane with all 240 kids. So however many kids there are, you may not be on the plane with all of right. them. And so they do need the access. I get that. I just, it just seemed like if the subset was, yeah, for sure, you know, segregated. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I fully understand you're aware of the privacy law, so I'm not questioning oh, no, that. But um, it was just that piece. So I appreciate the explanation. Okay, do we have any other comments or questions? I would seek a motion to approve policy JLCD as amended. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Graziano, second by Ms. Knight. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Thank you so much. And Eric, we took things out of order, so okay. don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't miss you. Okay. Thanks, Thanks again. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Have a safe trip. <laughs> Thanks. Dr. McCraw, did we you have recognitions you. tonight? Yes, I have one. I wanted to, I mean, there's just, there's, there's so many things that our kids do that it's hard to just call out. There's just so many, every day I get emails or I read newsletters, and that's the thing. I think that they... All of our students get recognized already in the principal's newsletters. Um, but this one, just I wanted to call it out. It was um, our students, it was our, our jazz ensemble. And they ranked fourth um, among, among a very competitive group of high school bands. Um, on the weekend of March the 12th, UNH's Jazz Festival, um, the parents who wrote to me wanted to just re really indicate how grateful they are um, a, to have such an amazing music department. Um, and um, specifically complimented Jeremy Dodge, who directs both high school and jazz bands. Um, they shared the songs that they had, they had performed um, at the jazz festival, and I, I should know, but I don't know how many bands there were, but they, they really did very, very well. And um, so I wanted to call out music tonight. And um, I also wanted to, the same weekend, the, sci the students who were in involved in the science um, competition they also went to a competition and ranked very well so mm -hmm. I was going to bring I had to reach out to their their uh, coordinator um, and I'll bring that back at the next meeting hopefully have some of the kids come as well so that's my recognition for tonight okay there's no one here for student council are there any liaison reports this isn't really a liaison report but I just want to make sure everybody um, knew that the High School Honors Art Show is opening at the Center for the Arts on Wednesday at 6.30. Next Wednesday, the yeah. 30th, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Next week. That's looking forward to that. In yeah, the new building? Yeah. It's awesome. It's always a great show. Um, elementary School Building Committee, our next meeting was scheduled to be March 22nd, but got pushed out to um, April 5th just to allow more time for the construction manager and project manager and architect to put together some of the cost estimates so um, just a delay in the meeting no concern about that just making sure we're thorough um, there was a CPAC meeting last week that both Dr. McLeod and I were uh, present at Dr. McLeod took most of the the meeting <laughs> and all the questions and answers um, I, I still think that we should have a meeting where um, Dr. Zaleski, when she's back and caught up, 
um, comes and speaks to the school committee just to give us her rundown of her first year and where things have been. Um, and then also Dr. McLeod talked about having a public forum for um, special ed parents on multiple topics, which have yet to be fully finalized, but it would be sometime around the May time frame we talked about when we had some more results from um, data that they've been collecting all year and um, a greater understanding of where things are going in the coming year. So um, that's the extent of that report. Dr. Zaleski will be coming to the second school committee meeting in April. So she'll be reporting okay. at that, at that um, meeting along with me um, on just general performance uh, update like we did last year. So she is prepared to come at that point and then the reaching out to provide a public forum um, really more focused for the parents would be closer to the end of the year. We want to wait till we can have some end of year data to share. Okay, for the school committee chair report, I have two things. One is there is a meeting with appropriations yes. on um, April 4th. Yeah, April 4th. And I cannot make it. So, um, Ralph and Dr. McLeod will be going, but I didn't know. I guess I was gonna I was gonna offer that opportunity to you first. <laughs> I can go. Six o'clock. So I'm assuming from that that I don't post it. That it's just. It's just one person. Yeah. Okay. As long as everyone wants to partake <laughs> in that. You can, you can represent. Um, we have seen in in the paper, and we've received correspondence from the town manager that they are seeking to decrease the overall um, operating budget increase that um, they they got to after considering all departments, including the school department. Um, but our next meeting is going to be with appropriations. Then the other thing um, for my report is we had talked about uh, discussing the procedure for handing out diplomas several meetings back. Um, I think the next thing we were going to do is send out a listserv to see if, uh, I guess, invite commentary from the public with respect to that procedure. Um, D Dr. McLeod, I think, spoke with different members of the school committee, and I'm not sure anyone feels truly passionate about taking this up this year, so I wanted to throw that back out there. Do we, is this something we want to do? We want to put out a listserv, and do we want to, um, have a discussion and or vote on the procedures for the diplomas. Because I have yet to send the listserv. So if, if you do have an interest in deliberating, then I would do that in preparation for our next meeting. I do not. No, fine. I go with the majority, so I'm fine either way. I didn't have a major opinion on it one way or the other. Okay. I mean, I think the reason why we were taking it up and, and considering it was because of student requests, which I think um, at the high school principal level, yes. it was turned down with respect to it being a particular procedure for one student, and so that's why we were considering taking up the entire procedure. But given that no one feels very strongly about changing the procedure or taking up and deliberating on it, we're going to take that off this agenda and future agendas until, I guess, someone feels inspired to... <laughs> Okay. Bring it back up. Um, okay, so the superintendent's report. Um, I, I wanted to call out, and maybe it should have been recognitions, but part of my report was just to um, mention the Chris Heron um, night last week and, and his, his uh, very moving presentation both to the students during the day and then to the families in the evening. Um, and that's all I can say about that. But I, first of all, it was very call out Bruce Elliott and um, Denise for organizing it and really publicizing it because it was very important for us to get a good turnout and you could see from the turnout as much as we've tried other events and been very disappointed it was an incredible turnout and it was a very emotional evening um, and so I just wanted to just wanted to comment on it that that I was really pleased that we did that um, I also wanted the school committee to know that in response to ongoing discussions that we've been having about math, science, engineering pathways, 
that I've been working with Mr. Bishop and Mr. Keller, and we will be providing, it's going to go out on listserv tomorrow, um, a public forum for parents on April the 14th. Um, the location to be determined, but it will be shared on the listserv. Um, we're going to have teachers there. We're going to have um, department chairs or SMLs. We intend for it to be a conversation. We want the parents to understand the decision making, the recommendations that have been made, um, that we believe that perhaps in the past they haven't been until after decisions about uh, pathways or curricular changes have been made and the intention is to provide opportunities to listen to what ha what plans are in place, what questions are being looked at, um, and then to really provide the opportunity for a conversation, for, for a Q&A. So probably less presentation and more let's just have a public conversation and so um, thank you to, to Evan and to Alan and to the SMLs at the high school um, for their enthusiastic response to my request um, to participate in this because I think it's really it's really an important conversation for us to have um, you already talked about uh, appropriations can I ask I you a question about the math yeah. thing? Um, when you say the list service that going to go to all parents of all age students? No, or? middle school and high school. We talked about this at length. Um, we felt that the fifth grade parents would be better served to understand this or for it to be included in the sixth grade parent night because then we'd have a wider audience. It would be really focused on that grade level. Um, many of the concerns are for our current eighth graders. How can they get to a, uh, AP? A, B, Calc, um, we have an answer to that. Um, and then plans for moving forward, we've got not only some changes in mind, but I'm really, we are really interested in gauging the community in a solution to particularly override, overriding at the middle school level, which has been part of the problem that's resulted in um, the kids who can perform at that level not not necessarily having access to it so it's a it's a conversation that we're we're really interested in having that I don't think um, we've been having and I see a confused look on your face John because you haven't been there yet well, as I'm a just parent about the term you said the, you Override. about overriding in yeah. middle school and so and, 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 and we'll talk about this at the at, but since I raised it myself the, the idea is that that students particularly at the middle school level who are still really developing uh, work habits and and um, you know I as an aside I had an, a great conversation with a group of high school students who talked about this very thing and said you know when I was in seventh grade I really didn't know you know necessarily if this is the path that I wanted to, to take but I also really wasn't that um, um, my work habits were not well established at, and yet and, and some kids got turned off because it was too much pressure and too much stress. When I talk about override, I mean that we have certain characteristics, certain qualities that kids have to be able to um, pass in order to be recommended for higher level courses. Um, and sometimes parents override the recommendation of the department, of the teachers and of the um, administration because they want their child to have an opportunity to take a higher level course. So we want to recognize that need that, oh my goodness, if I miss it now, they're never going to have a chance later, while having them still understand that there's a population, there's a group of kids that really need to work at that level. Um, and we want to be able to provide a very focused course um, that has very clear criteria for entry um, that, the, that the department has, has developed. Um, the people who can speak best to it, of course, are the mathematicians, of which I am not one. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we also recognize that students can work really hard and do really, really well in math as well, and they should have that opportunity. So it's going to be a, a good conversation for us to have as a community, and it, it will be happening on April the 14th. Um, I also wanted to mention because Jean, you called out the HCA, the art show, on the 30th, which is the school's art show, right? Yes. But we do we use the premises. Um, Colleen Giannano and um, Craig Hay, Evan, Allen. Um, so the principals and the SMLs and myself had a really great meeting with the HCA this afternoon. And the purpose of the meeting was to talk about how we can increase collaboration both ways, um, both how can we 
help them to make students aware of the many things that are offered through the HCA and also how can the schools um, work collaboratively to make programs available to kids perhaps in our buildings. So we talked about communication, we talked about opportunities um, at buildings, for example, kids walking from the Hopkins School and having access to, to activities. And then what can we do for the center school kids um, right now? before they're across the street. So it was a great meeting. They're great people to work with. Um, and I just wanted to say that that's something that the schools have been embracing. Um, mostly I wanted to speak tonight about the preliminary um, CPR exit, so the Coordinated Program Review exit interview. Um, it, was, it was very, very positive. Um, they used words like exemplary, exemplary social emotional support available to students and they called out things like guidance, psychologists, BCBAs, the behavior support team at the middle school they went on about. They were just so impressed with that program. The, the fact that multiple meetings take place for families who need them, um, they, were in, they were very impressed that there had been no long-term suspensions in over six years mm. at our middle school. They said that's, and that's because they connected that with all of the social emotional programs that we have in place. Um, the Futures Program, Responsive Classroom at the elementary level. We, uh, I signed a grant yeah, two days ago for a start, for a grant request for an, a new start program at the middle school that you're gonna be hearing more about. They wanna extend that program that was, that, that's in place at the high school. Um, so they're going to submit it and we'll see what happens, but they're excited about that. Um, they talked about our tiered system of support and comprehensive intervention plan, dedicated staff who know their kids, a coordinated system. Um, my very favorite comment, and I have it in bold in my note, my notes is um, one of the one of the individuals doing the interview said that there's a conscientiousness of caring. I loved that conscientiousness of caring about kids that cannot be quantified in a report and I feel like that's true I feel like our teachers need to hear that because they work so hard to meet the needs of, of kids and, and they, they care so much um, thoughtful consideration and planning by the whole team they did call out some concerns among them um, notification to parents um, at, at for parents uh, on the transfer of rights needs to happen so that's for 16 kids who are aging out um, they looked at the numbers of kids in certain classes at the B grid level these are all things that we can easily address at the high school and then um, really the one that that has me most concerned and that Dr. Zaleski and I have discussed is um, basically they, they called it there's a gap of perception between what the reviewers see going on in our buildings and the perception on the part of parents and that is something we need to work really hard on um, to make parents aware and feel confident and supported um, and heard and so that was the biggest concern that was raised and it's it's a big one um, that we we're really going to need to improve communication so that parents are fully aware of what's available. So you will be hearing much, much more. This is a preliminary exit interview that took place. Their uh, report will come probably towards the middle of May along with an improvement plan, recommended improvement plan, of which we can reply to and then we have a year to implement. Um, I think it's, that's another reason why I'd like to, we would like to time the report that Dr. Zaleski will be providing. Um, because hopefully it will be in line with having already received this report from the state so we can align all of those things and then set goals for, for next year. That's it. Great, so next we have the athletics report, Mr. Cardrill. How are you? Good. Good, Good evening. Welcome. I always say this to you, Eric, but you know that they have your report and they've read it. So, so you're going to do highlights for us, right? Yeah. Um, and then we're going to have some discussion about the proposal. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Um, the winter season was an outstanding season for Hiller Athletics. Like Kathy said, you guys have the write-up. I'll just kind of – it was a good, very good season, so I'll hit on a couple – uh, special highlights. The boys hockey team that's coached by Hopkins Elementary teacher Chris McPherson had the best season in school history as they finished at 19-3. and three. 
They advanced to the South Division III semifinals after winning two state tournament games. So it was the best season in school history. Chris has done a great job since taking over the program a few years ago. Um, really seen growth every year, and this year it kind of all came together for him. Uh, girls basketball team was much improved. Had a great season under first-year coach Mike Greco, a Hopkinton High School teacher. Team finished 16-7 and seven and defeated Ashland, the Central Division II state tournament, before losing in the sectional semifinals again. A quick turnaround. They didn't make it last year. Uh, Mike, uh, who was a veteran of our boys basketball staff, did a great job in transitioning over to the varsity girls position. Uh, cheerleading team coached by Melissa Zwang had an amazing season. Uh, from the fall to the winter, they only returned three members, yet the state opened up a new division called the Game Day Cheer Division. So basically the coach and the three returning players coached the whole, kind of coached and co-coached this group of um, new athletes, and they actually came together and captured the school's first cheer state championship in this new division. So that was um, a great turnaround uh, with a bunch of new girls, so that went well. Our wrestling program continued its um, success under longtime coach Tim Nelson. Eight boys out of 12 placed in the in this Division II Central Sectional Tournament. Wyatt Beach plays fourth in the State Division II Tournament. Lucas Kaminsky was a Division II State Champion. And Josh Sokol also took home a State Division II title and then finishes the runner-up at All States and at New England's. Um, the girls and boys swimming and diving team had an excellent season, second in the TVL. Um, for the girls, at the end of the year, they had the best finish in school history as they finished the sectional runners-up. Uh, diver Maddie Staus was a sectional champion, fourth at states. Diver Alyssa Annenberg was second in sectionals and second at states. Uh, the 200 free relay team uh, won sectionals and set both team and league records. Uh, last but not least, I usually always have them first, so I just changed it up a little bit, but our excellent girls indoor track team that you could put them first pretty much every season had another incredible season as they went 8-0 and, and captured another TVL title. Uh, team placed second at the state relay meet. Isabel Giordano broke the school record in the 1,000 meters, and the 4 by 400 team of Giordano, Mastriani, Haller, and Velasquez finished 10th at all states and qualified for nationals. The team is coached uh, by longtime coach Brian Hall. Um, you have the all-star lists with um, your packets. So if any questions on that, otherwise I'll just switch right over to the athletic, new athletic proposal. Can I ask uh, just one question on, on one of the teams? First of all, I, again, great results as always. Um, I noticed that the uh, the Dover Sherburn girls ice hockey program. You said you anticipate um, ten student athletes will be participating. Uh, it's thinking long term, what starts to become our break point where we where that starts team? to um, be? I, I'd, I'd say it's it's nowhere near a break point. Okay. Based on the two schools. Um, they're struggling to get, I mean, next year we may actually have more than them. Okay. Uh, so in terms of the numbers, they've actually even approached another school about coming in, uh, which will actually help in the financial piece for the program. Um, we've slowly gone up to, and what I'm hearing is the 10, so I think we're miles away from, I mean, you okay. legitimately need 20 plus. Um, and the girls who are playing are, are in, for both schools right now are very much, many of them, not all, uh, at a, kind of a beginner level in terms of where they're going. So I think we're pretty well set there for the foreseeable future for sure. Okay, great, thanks. Go ahead. All right. The, uh, uh, through this, this school year, it actually started last uh, spring. We started having some discussions about a, a ski team, and I know I've been here and we've discussed it and probably discussed it amongst yourselves. Uh, with an Alpine team uh, proposal, uh, we were talking to another school things during the year kind of changed and they, they jumped right in in what was originally intended to be a year of them being um, their own program to see how things went. Um, so in the, in the course of all this happening, um, we really have never had anything in place other than coming and making a request saying, hey, we, we want to start a new team. So we, I developed a proposal uh, with some input from Evan and Kathy uh, so that we have something in place uh, so we can determine um, what's the best course of action? How do we determine if it's sustainable? So in order to have a process in place to evaluate interest and sustainability while not incurring additional expenses that would burden the school budget, a budget ne neutral proposal has been developed. Any new approved program would be started and run as a two-year pilot program. During this time, the new program would not incur any school funding. At the end of two years, the pilot program would be evaluated and would either be dropped or be fully adopted into the athletic department offerings with full school support and funding. Um, the proposal has uh, six steps 
two-year pilot program, as I said. Uh, the head coach would be set at a, at a, at a fee of $2,000 a year for the first two years. The user fee would be doubled for the first two years to help pay for expenses in the coach. Currently, the fee is 110, so the fee next year for a piloted team would be 220. Uh, only one new program team or program could be piloted at a time to give us a chance to evaluate and also anticipate uh, future budget um, expenses. During any two-year period, only one new program would be piloted. After the first year, a funding proposal would be submitted to determine costs and establish if the athletic budget can sustain a program, again, for the budget process, getting that out after uh, the first year. After two years, it would either be discontinued if it was not sustainable or or it would be fully adopted as part of the athletic program with full financial support. If adopted, the coach would be paid accordingly and the athletic fee would be the same as for all other sports. So having this in place gives us kind of a template for moving forward um, and it kind of delves right into the ski team. It, it, this sort of developed as a result of the ski team, met with them many times. They do have the support. Uh, they have community support, student support across the grade. So we've, Evan and I have uh, met with them. We want to support them as this piloted program. Uh, we anticipate you know, having enough kids on our own. If not, there is another nearby school in the Tri-Valley League that might be interested, but we would be the host school uh, where we would, we would have the con control of the program, the future of the program, the financing, et cetera, unlike what might have happened if we'd have joined one, uh, an ex um, not an existing one, but the one that Ashland ended up going with Medfield. Uh, so we're, we're kind of well covered in terms of us running it ourselves, but if our numbers were such that you know, we didn't meet a uh, full team, but I'm pretty sure based on the interest we've heard about, most likely we would have a full team, but we do have that option of reaching out to a nearby school that does not offer it right now. So one of the things that I wanted to raise tonight was, you know, you, you, we had many discussions about the Alpine ski team, and it's my recollection um, that we left them with the understanding that, some, that we would get back to them at some point with some kind of assurance that they will be included in next year's budget. And so I feel that perhaps what we need at this point is some kind of written proposal. So we have this program proposal, but maybe some kind of format whereby you would have a template that, that, that they would fill out. anybody would have to fill it out who wants to be considered to be piloting. So it would be a consistent form, and that that form would include their anticipated numbers because that was one of the misunderstandings for me anyway was well why couldn't we be part of the Ashland team and what are what are the correct numbers and we would we would need to look to you for the mm -hmm. those recommendations but I think having the program proposal and then some kind of form that would go with it um, so that we're not left you're not left in October having several different teams coming to you knowing that we have agreed that we're only going to pilot one but we really did let the alpine ski team know that they would be the ones that would be piloting next year should we be choosing to do this so that was so one thing that just came to mind so yeah like we have the intent to travel form for mm -hmm. trips mm -hmm. Are, is there going to be a deadline because what if we have to choose there you go it's a good idea i mean that's a good point so there should be on this proposal a deadline added in order to be considered yeah. for yeah. the school year. About October Cause, 1st. Cause cause we, because of the way that, because I had asked this question of why there's only one, and now I understand from the answer that I received is that, well, if we're going to, if you have more than one piloting, then you also have to consider more than one to fit into the budget at mm -hmm. a later date, and so obviously that becomes problematic. But if you're only going to have one and you have multiple that have requests, then mm -hmm. you're going to have to decide between them, which I don't even know what the criteria would be for that, but... Um, but on top of that, like at least if you had a deadline, then that might weed out some. Yeah, I don't know what that deadline is, but you had said I heard you say October first. Uh, October first, I'm saying would be a good idea because of our budget process. So that would give about a month because we usually turn in our oh, budgets yeah. by the end of October. So giving a month to be able to factor in anything into However, the budget. But, but again, it's not being in the budget, but. I think that's a great thing to put in our proposal, but what I really wanted to iron out tonight is where does that leave the Alpine ski team? Because if we're saying October 1 for the following year, then we're pushing them out yet another year. Mm -hmm. um, well, so I think we'd have to make an exception and consider them coming here was like their first step in meeting that mm -hmm. deadline proposal. Well, and it was also the, the impetus behind 
putting together the, the program proposal. So, I mean, okay, we hadn't even thought of needing it but until. Maybe it's just me, but I don't get from this a budget neutral. I mean, I don't understand the full picture of the Alpine ski team. I mean, that's a very expensive sport. The busing is going to be distance away. You they're, know, um, no, they're handling all their own transportation, which we have so programs. That, that's what I'd like to see is Correct. like we're okay. handling our own thing. Mm -hmm. We have our own equipment. We're buying our own lift tickets. Budget neutral to me means that the current fee or the 220 might times the number of kids covers the 2,000. That's right. Correct. But what is a normal head coach? You know, I, uh, A normal head coach makes quite a bit more in terms okay. of, and it's in the contract, quite et cetera. So this is not in the contract, so we're not tied into anything with that. And also part of them coming to us, um, I mean, originally they came to us and said, we'll fund the whole thing. Um, so, but again, you know, wanting, if you're gonna have an interscholastic program, it needs to come from the interscholastic, you know, from our the athletics rest, department right. and we're, the school. And the rest of ours are um, all fully but funded. So they yeah. were all aboard, all aboard on handling transportation, mm -hmm. handling lift tickets, handling all of those things. And that's part of why the ski team fit very well mm -hmm. in terms of the first one to do this. Again, some other sports, you might, you might not get to that level. There might be other concessions that they'll have to make mm -hmm. to be able to handle their, their situations. But again, in most cases, when there's the, you know, the demand of people wanting it, they want to get it started. Mm -hmm. um, and they, this year, they, you know, the things they did were on their own and their own fundraising and their own paying for it. So um, this will actually make it somewhat more, you know, affordable in terms of um, us being involved. So then a pro. Well, I understand that them coming was enough to kind of qualify them to be the one we try next year I'd like to see their, their program proposal plan. right you know, their, right here's what we have in mind yep. we have well, our own life I don't know if they're under our liability insurance mm -hmm. once they go under this pilot more detail mm -hmm. and qualifications I think it's really important to Lori's point for if there's multiple mm -hmm. competing ones. how and, and they don't have to necessarily compete against somebody right off the bat but we do need to really hammer that out before additional teams cool. come forward mm -hmm. and even though the budget like the budget proposal is going to be budget neutral in the pilot program i still think that the expense the total expense should be mapped out as to what the school district would expect in the two after the two years because right. that's our, that's step five okay but i know so step five for me was first of all let's pilot it and see what the interest is at, at a, and it's budget neut neutral. But within year one and before we go into the next year's budget where we would all of a sudden be saddled with the cost, we would need to be able to have that level of detail right. um, to be able to consider whether or not we'd be able to sustain it. Okay. Yeah. I, I do think, so understanding that we don't want to, you want to be able to pilot, you want to be able to, to, to try things in, in sort of a more nimble way. Uh, some directional idea in the proposal I think would be good because when you think about qualifications, I, I can't think of what it would be, but if there's just an, a cost prohibitive sport that somebody proposed and we can just look at it on the face of it and say, there's no way we're ever going to be able to absorb this in the budget. Why let them go? Why, why have them go through the, mm. the first year? Mm. Well, right? and also so I think interest because the fact, the fact is y if you have interest one year but not continuing interest, then that becomes another factor. Mm -hmm. so. And I want to be sure that if, if in the pilot program they're like, no, we'll pay for everything, and then you get to year two and they're like, well, we want you to take over these expenses. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be in the business proposal, but it would be nice to know if, if the people that are backing this right now see how they envision this partnership moving forward if it becomes a, a team. So. So it's almost ideas. what I'm hearing you say is almost like an application process to be part of the pilot would include a detailed business plan and a proposal or at least an estimate as to what the total cost would be once it's run up and running um, and fully funded by the school department. Mm -hmm. Did I get that? I'd like yeah, to say I, that. I think that sustainability is, is a really important criteria. No, it's well, well, sustainability is an important criteria. I mean, we have a hockey program, right? I mean, I, I bet if we looked at the cost of the hockey program, it's probably more or just as much as an alpine ski program. So now all of a sudden, to become part of our interscholastic sports program, we're going to set a different bar than for the hockey team, right? There no, could be just as many students interested, but we're saying now the total cost to your program is a factor. Well, 
so I think the difficulty of the conversation is that is that we're doing it in sort of abstract, right? It, it, so I, I would agree with you in that if you bought if you brought a program to pilot, for, at least if I were evaluating it, that had a, a cost equivalent to a hockey program, that that wouldn't be something that I mean, like I would I would want to to judge them on the current interscholastic athletic programs. However, I just think that having some idea of what a future cost would be, we don't want to be in a situation where we where we run a pilot program and then all of a sudden we get it into the budget two years from we get into a budget proposal two years from then and it just it just is prohibitive. Right. But why would that be the first one cut? Why wouldn't it then be the most expensive sport? I mean that's the problem, right? Yeah. Let's say rugby I think was just approved as Right. By the MIA that people right. could start. So someone can come and say, I want to propose a rugby team. That's going to be cheaper, probably, right. than alpine skiing. <laughs> Depends on if you're but, talking medical bills. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I mean, that's not our criteria for deciding what sort of sports we're going to offer. If it is, and it gets to be a budget issue, and we're like, we don't have enough money in the budget for our, all of these sports teams, which one are we going to cut? It doesn't have to be the alpine ski team just because they're newest to the plate. Maybe it's going to be the most expensive one with interest that's waned over the last six years. But but so I guess I don't. I guess I don't. I, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't agree. I don't agree that we wouldn't do that. We, ha I, we have right, done that. If if they brought a proposal for again an alpine ski program that had a huge amount of interest, I think we wouldn't be. I mean, e even in the cost proposal, I don't think we'd say that's really expensive. Let's not do it. I think it would. But it's an evaluative criteria, right? I mean, it's it's something. It's a data point that we should know, just as we should know if we're evaluating it against other sports, what the other sports cost. I'm not, I, I don't think, honestly, part of this pilot program is to discover sports that are increasing in interest that might not be an inter interscholastic athletic program, not unlike, um, I mean, not unlike I, my first year on the committee, we were talking about not offering Latin anymore at right. the school because of the waning interest in Latin and more interest in languages like Mandarin. That's that's the process that we would go through. So, so but I think, think to, but I think, but similarly, we had to understand what the Mandarin program was going to cost. It wasn't the only evaluative factor, but I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't see how we wouldn't want to know what it's going to cost. No, I guess I just think it's hard to ask them to do it in year one as part, like, or before they've even started, right? I mean, they may have a good community where they all know each other, but we don't. They don't really know how many kids are going to end up interested once it's being piloted and it's actually out there to maybe, I don't know, not the folks who ski yet, watch who's it. Or, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know that we understand or they would understand the size of the program. But then, um, anyway, I feel like we're, I'm getting far field. I'm happy to see whatever proposal or application process we put together. But I, I do, just having this conversation now, have a concern. Is this something that the school committee is going to actually look at the applications and make the decision? I was going to ask that question. I'm not, yeah. So uh, my suggestion, the same way that field trips are recommended to us by the principal, well, by the principal to you and by, by you to us, yes. I think there needs to be sort of that piece in place as well, and it should be recommended by the principal and the athletic director to the superintendent and then yes. to the school committee because you know the five people sitting at this table w don't really have an independent ability to judge that that's really in your purview and in addition to that I think the other piece of information that's critical to put into this application process is what is uh, what is the the pool of competition are there other you know are they going to only ever compete against medfield because they're the only other town that has this one particular sports team or what is you know is this something that all of a sudden everybody in the tri-valley is going to have rugby so i think that's an important criteria as well and that's that's the conversation ellen to your point in the past when we have had to make serious budget cuts and had conversations about which sports are we going to cut back on them? I mean, this is how we got athletic fees in the first place because parents were like, just don't cut the sports, we'll pay fees. But we had conversations, I remember, Eric, about, you know, as freshman, freshman sports, sports we were talking about because there's less competition among other towns and it doesn't cut as many kids out of the program and, and that kind of thing. So all of those factors um, are what we looked at before when we were faced with making really tough choices in that area of our budget and I think they should all really be considered in adding something I in. I think just to tie with the things you were saying, um, I think what he's talking financially, until it's in the budget, I think the finances matter and then 
like what you're saying about established sports and leagues, hockey's to the point, boys ice hockey, where nine schools now have it in our league. It's played across the state. Most of all these new sports are limited. They're, you know, the sports of sailing, gymnastics, um, skiing, um, girls ice hockey's growing. I, and again, we got into a, I thought a great situation for a girls ice hockey because the costs are contained compared to running your own ice hockey right. program. So if we were sitting here going over girls ice hockey, we'd be really spinning on, spinning looking at the numbers. Uh, but once a program's in, I don't think then you decide to make the cut be, based on the fact that it costs X amount of dollars. So I think that's where the cutoff point is. Once it's in, now you're looking at, and most of the time you try to maintain your varsity programs. And um, Nancy, you know, we've gone through those, I'm sorry, Gene knows, we've yeah. gone through those situations um, with past school committees where things have come up of where, where if we had to cut, um, and we never got to the point where we were like cutting a program. We were looking at levels and trying right. to keep that sport alive. Right. I mean, I think the other thing is before, you know, the reason to have some, I mean, you know, are, are they going to have ac absolutely accurate numbers when they're piloting this about what the total cost is? No, but to have some ballpark is important because, for example, a, a, a sport like skiing, which is really expensive, you don't want to ask parents to, to pony up a lot of money for two years only to find out that we already know we can't afford to add that into our budget. I mean, that's just really not fair um, to anybody involved. It's a lot of time and money and effort wasted and I a lot of I mean, the other so thing, too, just because skiing's at the forefront, um, I do have good estimates for some of the people in terms of what the, the costs are, but you also have a, a, a sport where there are we can see what other schools are paying and not paying for. Right. Um, you know, there's there's sports that we have that exist like that now. You know, the golfers get only so much time at Hopkins and Country Club. It's a great arrangement, and we're not paying for it. But they end up some either going as their members or going on the weekends to these other courses where they're they're incurring they're incurring expenses. So there's there's other expenses. So we may find out that in the ski community, that's that's pretty acceptable. That you know what the school helps contribute, takes care of a coach. But because transportation's on off days, and it you know it's a couple kids getting up up somewhere that they are covering that it's on their own, the ski passes are on their own. So we we may find out that that's you know kind of standard practice on ter in terms of what's going on with that sport. So our, while the sport itself, if you had to pay everything, but there's kind of an acceptable level in each sport what some what people expect to pay, um, and nowadays with the outside world of athletics being thousands of dollars you're still offering them a, a, a good bang for their buck when it's a school sport. So my other questions, um, so as I'm understanding what you, what you, how your response to Kelly, basically the fee that you're charging is to cover the cost of the coach only. I would just say, I wouldn't be specific about what the current athletic fee is and doubling it. I would just say, you know, we require X amount of students to start a pilot just the way we do with a club at the high school and the cost of the coach is going to be two thousand dollars and it'll be divided equally amongst the participants um, because otherwise if you're collecting let's say you have 20 kids and you're collecting 220 dollars well now you've got more than you need for that coach for that year um, and it may or may not be tied to you know the athletic fee um, based on the last couple of years was expected to have changed this year and that wasn't supported so it didn't but it might change again in the future um, so I would just maybe not be quite there so may be some registration fees involved um, you know t for some of the events and so on so that was the only other th thought process was that that money would help cover some of those registration I would fees just be leery of putting concrete numbers in there and give yourself the mm -hmm. flexibility to say you know um, an athletic user fee which will cover the cost of the coach and whatever you just said will be equally divided amongst the participants and we require a, whatever it is you think is a reasonable minimum number of students um, to start the club. Um, and then I guess my final question is about um, transportation or they're on like the girls hockey team is on their own for mm -hmm. transportation so that whatever liability there is or isn't as far as transporting our students we've already worked that out and it would be the same mm -hmm. for a pilot we, we would want that to be part of their business plan so they would have to 
they would have to lay that out in terms of what their expectations were around those kinds of things. And like, would they do uniforms or? I don't know. No, they um, they, they do just do bibs. Bibs. I mean, n well, for skiing, I just meant like a pilot program. You know, would they also be responsible for uniforms? Well, or if you're just saying it in general. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's I mean it's a high bar to get a new mm -hmm. you know to to make this request for sure. Okay. So um, Eric and I will work on making the changes that you've suggested <coughs> in the proposal. We'll also work on an application form um, modeled somewhat after the field trips with the approval by the principal and AD uh, or, or recommendation and then a further recommendation from me before it would even come to you. Um, can, I just, can I make a comment on that again? And I'm sorry to belabor yeah. this because it's just an update, but we have a policy that requires us to approve overnight field trips. We don't have a policy that requires us to or tells us or so then we're going to have to add a policy I guess if if that's the intention is that the school committee is going to approve the pilot program applications or requests and recommendations then it should be a policy I mean it's just it's not part of our policy I think that should be maybe it's an agenda item for another yeah. day yeah. where we have to decide if that's really within the purview of okay. the school committee and that's something we want to have a policy about but that right is now what we do with when we add clubs you know, they, they are approved by the principal and recommended to the superintendent who, you know, and then they... That might be practice. I'm just saying we don't have a policy that says that we approve no, that. No, no, I know, program. but I'm just saying so so that's parallel. So if we need a policy, it probably needs to cover both things or we can have a practice similar to our other practice. I mean, I do think it needs to come up to us because of the fact that it, it's an indicating future budget spend. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what and I, I would also agree. I think it needs to be a. It well, does need to be a policy. That's what I was going to say. Is that it, right now, athletically, everything would come up in the budget. So this would be this would come across your plate in a budget because <coughs> obviously we'd be asking for an increase because of this. Yeah, yeah but so it's sort of it, yeah. It's just it, to that point, it has policy. that feel of it, if we didn't have that policy, it'd be coming to us two years before it's actually going to hit the budget. All right. Right. So I will bring one this. Year, this way right, wrote. Right. I will bring the updated forms along with the proposed policy back to you at some point before next October. <laughs> but that, right. So uh, thank you for your work on this in response to those requests, you know, when we had that budget meeting for the ski team. I think this is very much, at least in my mind, thinking back to that meeting, what we were asking for. So, so where does that leave the ski team? So the ski team, once this is, this is developed, all the forms and we've got everything in place, um, they will be asked to complete the form and it will go through the process of being approved by Evan and Eric and then it will come to me. Um, hopefully by the time we get through that process, we will have also developed policy, so then when we bring it to you, you can approve it. So I would anticipate from a timeline point of view that we could get the forms in place before the end of the year so that the club can, can have some time to, you know, develop their business plan, do their homework, and have it to us by September along with the updated policy. Does that seem like a good timeline? Mm -hmm. Would, interrupt. would it be possible to do this by the end of the school year? They have all their stuff. So okay. for them to, to put this together, they have all the information. Sure, right? I think They've we could do that. And the legwork. And the other piece to it is in June, we register with the MIA for sports. And okay. you build, you know, by sport. And then you're set. So you really want to get everything right. in by the end of this school year for okay. the, the ski team. Moving forward, if we were in a situation where we had an open thing, then that time frame would be fine because then we'd be we're, you know, before the budget October gets set, one. exactly. Okay. Uh, we will work to have this completed and back to you by the beginning of June. Can I, can I say two more things? One is, um, I think, you know, they have the opportunity to do this for field trips and, and other things, maybe um, to allow them the opportunity to fundraise for themselves to offset some of their costs. And the, um, and the other question, and you don't have to answer it right now, but when, when this does come back, I, you probably have an idea of what sports are likely to be on the landscape based on what the MIAA is adding in and whatnot. So that would just be helpful just to have some kind of a concept of, I mean, because the ones that you listed are all super expensive, except for rugby, probably, right? Um, Rugby's just, I mean, literally just passed. So that's going to take a while to get going. Some schools are doing it as a club. Um, in our area, the ski thing is probably the one where it's generating the most interest based on the types of communities, the kids, and their, their involvement with other kids 
in other schools. So I think it definitely rises above. There's pockets of interest, obviously, in every sport, yep. uh, but this this is the one where it's definitely generating um, multi-school interest. But I think we had gymnastics a, mm, a way bunch of years ago, mm -hmm. and that's expensive. And you said the the sailing, sailing, which there's a club now, mm -hmm. right? So that may be coming for. So anyway, it would just be helpful to have some idea because all, all those seem expensive. All right, I'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. We'll Good talk night. with you. Okay, thanks so much. Okay, school committee policy, KHC distribution of materials on district grounds. For our consideration is the request and recommendation of the superintendent to consider establishing policy KHC to address safety concerns. Are there any, there's a motion before you, are there any comments or questions on the motion or the policy? This came to my, this was requested of me by Phil Powers um, as a result of his concerns during one of the most recent um, polling voting days where there were people in the parking lot getting in the way of cars. Um, because of the current bylaws where they have to be a certain number of yards away from the entry to the polling station, um, he felt that we in, in our, because, and because it happens in our school, which is not always the case in every community, he wanted us to develop a policy that would indicate that people would have to be, I think it says off of school property, does it not? Um, and in your uh, yeah, they cannot be on district property. property. So in our case, it would be at the entryway where typically people are, but um, absent policy for us to be able to, he was called in to try to remove some individuals that were he was concerned about them being in the way of part of cars etc um, and we had nothing to stand on we could not remove them because we didn't have policy and because I guess they were the correct number of yards away and they said that to him so um, that's why this is in front of you I could swear we did this policy. I looked and it wasn't on there, I, but I could swear we did this policy a couple of years ago. Oh, well, more than a couple because I haven't done it. No, 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 I know. Oh. It was. It was before you. I, oh, so But more it's than not a on there. So, yep. I must no, have. we found it on the MASC yeah. website. We just we used someone else's. We, Do you remember yeah. doing it for the same reason? I, I know. I've, I swear Mary Colombo and I did this, oh. but it's not on the. So, either we. The other thing we have, it, we have all of Mary's files and it. No, I know. It's so funny. I was so sure we had one already on this, but d that's completely irrelevant. Right. Okay, so I'd seek a motion to adopt and approve policy KHC as written. Wait, wait, I asked if there were any questions, and she decided to launch into <laughs> an explanation of it. Are there questions? Yes. Yeah, I had okay. a question. Because it, it, it's related to the next item. I don't understand the need for two different policies here. Like, it seems to me like if you're doing materials... Why doesn't materials encompass all information? Isn't it the difference of the source? Mm -hmm. But but that's my question. Why well, why is actually it no wait one's distribution of materials, one's distribution dissemination of information. So the other one talks about like e flyers and mm -hmm. such. I mean, admittedly, you could probably fold them all into one policy, but I think that's the differentiation. Okay, so one is talking about dissemination of information electronically, mm -hmm. well, but yeah. it doesn't or say that. Or through backpacks. Okay. Just seems like a lot of policies. That's <laughs> I think this one we always had, right? Yes. yes. We've just made some and changes to it. So the one that the KHC is new to for that specific reason. Yeah. KHCB is current with some amendments based on current practice. Um, and then KHB is on because we're no longer allowing it at all. So the fact that it's policy, but we don't allow advertising in the schools, I wanted to bring it to your attention to see your thoughts. So they're okay. They're similar but different. Um, all three have been, this information has been disseminated. Um, it wasn't largely compelling enough for anyone, I guess, to and comment on One other question I had is, <laughs> so having this policy does what for Officer Powers? He would bring the policy, and he would ask people to get off of school property based on 
But couldn't school. he ask them to get off school property based on the he, fact he, that... I, I should let you finish your question, but... Yeah, I, I just, I guess I don't understand what having the policy does differently for him than what he could have done before. Apparently I mean, he couldn't. He state could not. State law allows them to be there if, as long as they're 300 feet. So, so, but is so this for sure we don't preempt. That's what you're saying. Like we're not stronger than state law, right. right? Well, he can say it's policy of this school district, and so you have to leave. But we had no backup. We had no, well, we, he had no, nothing to go to. And recently there's been a whole leafleting of cars that's been happening, and this would prevent, this would allow him to well, that's the advertising policy part. Well, it would also, oh, well, be, it'd also be covered in this one. Distribution covered. of materials on district grounds. Yeah, this would, you can't leave with a car in the middle school parking lot. Yeah, that's that right. would be covered under this policy. Right. <laughs> you better let the students know. <laughs> well, it's not, okay. Are they doing it? No. Um, okay. I just, I, I just wonder how much backup it really gives for him but if, it, if it's something that I mean he brought it up he asked for it he yeah. thinks it'll be useful that's yeah. fine I don't have any opposition to it I just from a you know like you're saying from a state law perspective I just I don't know it seems like it could be challenged but that's fine okay. I sort of suspect and again I'm talking to the lawyers but I would suspect if it became a question of the state law it would be a question of if this policy were in place should we have the polling place at the school I mean, that would be sort of the town's issue at that point, I would think. Yeah. That would be an interesting one for them to tackle. <laughs> okay. Hmm? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so does, does anyone want to make a motion to approve policy page C as written? So moved. Second. Motion by Miss Knight. Second by Mr. Jeeves. Sorry, <laughs> I, I thought it, I actually thought it was you. I was, it was so close. Just <laughs> <She's> practicing <laughs> through my voice. <laughs> Motion by Miss Birchman. Birchman. Second by Mr. Graziano. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Unanimous. Next policy: um, KHCB dissemination of information brochures. Comments or questions on the policy? Yes, I have one question. Um, the, you removed the part about um, on some occasions you may allow the distribution of information through the listserv. On rare occasions, we moved it? Yeah. Um, so it still says on rare occasions. Let's see. It only talks about flyers. It, that that just says that you can put paper flyers in backpacks yep. pre-K to five. Mm -hmm. But the part about on rare occasions you'll send a listserv has been deleted. So, um, so all of this is here for discussion purposes tonight. Um, through the district's listserv versus. On rare occasions, the superintendent has said it may allow a school support organization to distribute paper flyers. Oh, yeah, that's the difference. Mm -hmm. So there are exceptions made for HPTA for half to, for their big fundraiser to um, distribute paper flyers. Mm -hmm. So it's calling out that practice versus listserv. I'm open, I mean, whatever the school committee thinks, I'm really presenting this based on what seems to be the practice coming out of my office. Um, but if as parents you think that this is something that we should leave in just, just to give us more flexibility. Well, so the problem for me is that like you have on that same paragraph, the first sentence says flyers may be posted on the district's website with the approval of the superintendent. But there is actually nothing on here saying that anyone can distribute anything via e-flyers. Mm -hmm. So should that be in here? The e-flyer piece? Well, I th or the listserv. Well, I guess I don't, I don't know what the difference is between the e-flyers and the listserv because the announcement of the e-flyers goes out on the listserv, so. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I think the e-flyers are posted on the district website now. Right. Like it right, but then there's a listserv it. notification right. that there's new e-flyers. Yeah. But the difference is sometimes there has been allowed to be a, a listserv reminder of 
you know, the HPTA and HEF are sponsoring a spelling bee this weekend. Please go see, you know. Okay. In which I've never seen. Well, they haven't had the spelling bee for a couple of years, but uh, no, I, I mean, was trying like, to think of it. Oh. No, but I haven't seen one that's like that either. Yeah, yeah, like, not like, like not of any of them. Bee, but the first part. Of any HPTA or HEF yeah. because, or any because, like boosters. Because we're trying to have them come more from the schools. We felt that yeah, parents right. are more likely to, principal to look yeah. at, and, and those have been greatly improved, but I feel like pushing it out of the central office and into the schools of the, of the schools that your children attend, we felt that you'd be much more likely to be interested in. And, and so those things now come from the schools. And, and the, the and that the at least the HBTA, from my experience, is pushing it through those school they newsletters. That's the channel they, they reach out to the principals and they correct. ask for that. So that seems to be the preferred channel. Yeah. I'm just thinking. Oh, I mean, maybe the state of the schools is a better example, right? Like, so that's a PTA sponsored um, right. program that I think goes out through the listserv as a reminder. And it's it, it was done differently this year, but in the past has been you know shortly before town meeting and the budget and whatnot has been presented. So um, I don't know. I just leave that because it's at your discretion. I I, I would. I don't see the harm in leaving it in there in case there is some circumstance in which you think it's warranted. It's, cer mm -hmm. it's certainly, clearly, if we don't think it's ever used, it's not being abused. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I think from a flexibility perspective, I agree. Yeah. Right. If you don't put it back in there and you, this, the opportunity comes up, we have to amend the policy yeah. as opposed to just being able right, to right, use right. your discretion. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any other comments or questions? Do people agree with that? Uh, I don't so have an objection. Add an or, listserv or something on there. You wouldn't have we'll two on rare occasion no. sentences. That's a good point. <laughs> well, you yeah, right. combine that into the one sentence. Rarer. Distribute even paper rarer flyers or. or yeah, there might be an even listserv. rarer occasion. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with that amendment, is anyone required <laughs> to make a motion to approve policy KHCB? So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Birchman, second by Ms. Knight. <laughs> That's just making sure. All those in favor? Yes. Yes, yes unanimous. I was thinking you must feel like I'm shouting if you think Jean was right next to you when she's talking. No, I don't know why. I, I couldn't recognize. <laughs> I can't hear myself tonight, recognize so if I am voice. shouting, let me know. Right. <laughs> So for our consideration is the request and recommendation of the superintendent to decommission policy KHB advertising in the schools based on current practice. Is there any comments or questions on the recommendation? And I have no idea yes. about the history of this or why it's on. Um, it what? seems that what advertising is happening? There isn't any. Yes, there is. Okay. So I mean the the first the primary example that I can remember is that there's advertising um, space that's been purchased on the top of the scoreboard in the high school athletic center. Um, well, and I was thinking like, okay, so if you have Jostin's advertising for school rings, is that included? Like, you know what I mean? Like there's different things. This, like this was, this was, this policy was put in place when we were adding fees and looking for alternative sources of revenue and there were districts at the time that were going to the extreme of putting advertising on the side of school buses and we clearly did not want to do anything like that but we were getting requests and wanted to put a policy in place that made it easy to evaluate and be very restrictive about those requests but not cut off a potential a potential source of revenue if it was appropriate so um, for example, and I don't know, but when they set up the Athletes Village behind the middle school, is there advertising on any of those tents? There may very well be, I don't know. But we are certainly generating a great deal of revenue from running those fields to the BAA for those couple of days. So um, the other question I had is, you know how we, we advertise, there's all different groups that advertise on the tennis courts that hang up signs on the tennis courts um for events but that's not for that's fundraising information that's not, not like we don't get money for that right but, but gene can i ask a question about the scoreboard because i've never had anybody request 
that space, nor do I know what the rate would be. It well, says well, here. Yeah, I mean, they have, their signs are up there. And they, who's are? FIPS, FIPS Insurance. Um, <laughs> who approves it? Because this superintendent certainly didn't. My guess is that after they, you would have to ask Ralph if they've, we haven't been paid in years. If Ralph they've made a good ongoing here. payments or there was originally an agreement for a certain period of time for a certain period, certain amount of money and whether that's been renewed and followed up on or just not yeah. not remembered <laughs> and not, that not removed, I don't know. But for yeah. the new scoreboard they want on the football field. <laughs> That I guess it, it, in in large measure too. I understand. So it does appear that we have some potential utilization of it. But <laughs> I, I guess when I read the policy, I understand that it may not be used now. But I'm not necessarily sure what the motivation to decommission it is. Right. That was my question. I mean, I don't think we. I don't think it's something we need to pay a lot of attention to. But in the case that someone were to approach us, um, when you know at some point in the future, or if we, we were to, to do a new a score. <laughs> do a new scoreboard and um, or I mean I'm in no way <coughs> proposing this but if we ever built a school hockey rink and people approached us to put advertising on the too. boards right that, that we'd, we'd have a policy in place by which we could evaluate that rather than having to react and create a policy okay. so I, I, don't, I guess I'm I good just, with that I just did don't see the, the motivation to decommission how did it come to light like why I think because the other things were being it looked at, it's, it just seemed like, hey, we don't seem to be doing this. Why don't we add it for discussion purposes? Um, but, but I do have a question around, and maybe it's a Ralph question, um, the school committee would be setting advertising rates for school and school district advertising. So do we have a rate in place? Um, I'm pretty sure we would need to benchmark that. <laughs> but it's outdated if we have one. Well, I mean, I, there was, <laughs> you know, specific to that scoreboard, there, I, I mean, I don't want to say the rate because I may not remember it correctly, but um, but there absolutely was a rate agreed okay. to for a period of time. And is it the same company that's advertising? I have the feeling here? they got put up and were never taken, taken down. Taken down. But maybe yes, they've they've continued the to you know renew that every couple of years. Yeah, I don't know, and I don't. For the budget. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're great supporters of the schools, so I don't want to. Of course, you know I, I raised. I, you know I don't. I, 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 for 13 years ago, <laughs> I don't want to call right, them out. So we're going to leave this as it is, and we're going to not vote to decommission. Correct? Okay. Correct. No, but it's been entertaining. Oh boy, that's a good one. Next item, high school stateside overnight travel recommendation for our consideration is the request and recommendation of the superintendent to approve the travel request for the Business Professionals of America Boston trip May 5th through May 8th. There is a motion before you. Are there any comments or questions on the motion? Okay, I would seek a motion to approve the travel request for the Business Professionals of America May 5th through May 8th, 2016 Boston trip. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Nickerson, second by Ms. Knight. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Unanimous and so carries. So I'll just say that normally the same person does the motion and the second. You guys are all over the mark. That's why I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear. Just really Kelly's been a pretty tonight. consistent second. I've been keeping track of that. Next He's jumping up right is in that the place. high school club stipends. For our consideration is the request and recommendation of the superintendent to approve the request to reallocate $3,300 in stipend monies as outlined in the agenda materials. Are there any, there's recommended motion before you. Are there any comments or questions on the motion? I'd seek a motion to approve the reallocation of $3,300 in stipend monies as outlined in the agenda material. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Graziano, second by Ms. Knight. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Unanimous and so carries. Next up. For our consideration is the request and recommendation of the superintendent for the payment of the invoice for capital project article warrant number 16-050 in the amount of $5,100 as appropriated in article 24. There's a recommended motion before you. Are there any comments or questions on the motion? Okay, I would seek a motion to approve the warrant, the payment of warrant number 16-050 in the amount of $5,100 to the vendor as outlined in the warrant. So moved. Seconded. Sorry. Motion by Ms. Knight, second by Ms. Nickerson. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Unanimous and so carries. We have our second opportunity for public comment. 
Nobody here. So, Dr. McLeod, I move by consensus. The superintendent recommends the school committee vote to approve the operating budget and other funds warrant number 16-049 in the amount of $464,867.19. The superintendent recommends the school committee vote to approve the high school student warrant activities warrant number 16-048 in the amount of $23,031.40. The superintendent recommends the school committee vote to approve $776 from the HPTA Spiritware fundraiser to be placed in the Hopkins School gift account as indicated in the agenda materials. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Birchman, second by Ms. Knight. All those in favor? Yes. 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 And so carries. Um, our next meetings are Thursday, April 7th at 7 p.m. here in the Middle School Library and then April 28th also at 7 p.m. In the, here in the middle school library. I'd seek a motion no, to, not yet. no? I have a question. Okay. There's one thing that was in our materials, and I know I asked Dr. McLeod this, and this is not, I know you probably went to Ralph on it, but we haven't talked about it in a while. And our capital accounts document, we're, there's still that carryover account for the new high school of $74,000. Have we gotten any update from Mr. Dumas on Yes, that? we sure do. And I, I have this here with me. Um, so there's been a there's been a s lot of communication on this. We have followed up with the town manager, and there's been communication back back and forth. Um, it's apparently in the hands. I'm going to try to read this to you. Um, the the school department did construct a building on land that was subject to an APR, and the town was given the option of paying $110,000 or putting an alternative 11-acre parcel under an APR. Legacy Farms agreed to do this for the town so that we could save the 110,000. At this point, everything is in, this is from the town manager, Mr. Kamalo. At this point, everything is in order for Legacy to restrict the land. Roy is on notice that he needs to submit the required documents to MDAR. Stephen Zeef, who used to work for Legacy, was the point person on this project and is no longer with Z Legacy. So basically, this has been reported. We've asked for it to be removed from the school committee budget books, and it's in the, the hands of the town. So. There's nothing more that we can do. Yeah. We've expressed an interest to not have it continue to show in our budget. Um, and okay. So, but the only way, to, so it has to be voted at town meeting to re remove it because mm -hmm. it's it's not money, it's the authorization for borrowing. Right. right. It's the balance of the authorization for borrowing that was borrowing. for the high school. Yep. So it continues. I'm sorry. Yeah, I knew so, there was more. So, so I think, oh, sorry. So it seems that we are thus able to ask Chris Sandini to close out the new high school capital article at the end of the fiscal year. Yeah. Why would it have and to be voted? I mean, if you I don't think spend, you have to go. I thought it just expired. I think they've done it that way before that you just officially vote at town meeting to. Really? Yeah. Am I wrong on that? Haven't we done that? So who else is some of our other ones? Do we or do they? Budget, it was just like, yay. Um, um, I, this yeah, one, no, this one is, may be, this one may be different, secret? honestly, because I, if I look at the way this is expressed, mm. I'm not 100 percent sure we don't have this money. We don't. You sure? Mm -hmm. That's been sitting there longer than I've been sitting here. If we still had it, <laughs> I would guess you'd have to vote to somehow it give it back. Since we well, that would just th that would just go into free cash. Right. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I, Ralph Ralph will know the answer to this. I'm pretty sure we've voted at town meeting to, you know, res extinguish the okay permission to borrow it. All right. But is that an article a warrant article that Norman has to put forth, or do we? Or I think what? it goes. In, it's in one of those administrative articles at the beginning. I yeah. think. Yeah. So we'll find out. Yeah. yeah. So oh, maybe it's just a month into yeah, one, of those. It's one of those. Because this last communication basically says that there is no specific deadline by which Legacy Farms should fulfill this obligation. So we just want to get it. We would like it showing on paper up that else. everyone acknowledges. So I'll find out how we make the vote happen, Lori. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, I would seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved. Motion by Mr. Graziano. So second by Miss Knight. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Unanimous and we're adjourned at 8.30.